Hey guys, how are you? Today we're going to talk about phosphate and nitrate. A lot of us are always concerned about too high phosphate, too high nitrate. Now the big thing today is too low nitrate, never too low phosphate, but in my opinion, I'm going to show you today why some phosphate and nitrate is completely fine. Okay, so let's get right into it. Before I move the tank, which is about four weeks ago, this is the 75 gallon, I measured 0.6 parts per million in phosphate and my tank looked fine. Some of the corals weren't opening up as much, I have to say that. You would think at 0.6 it would have been a crash almost, but it wasn't. Jeez, guys, I'm getting older, you know? Got the beard graying up. Oh man, it's hard getting old. All right, we can talk about phosphate on paper and the science behind it, but what you need to do is get a decent tester. This is Hannah, and it's digital. And test your water to see what your phosphate level is to start out. That's the first thing you want to do. Okay, so this is a good sign for me, 0 0.14. Now I did a water change about two weeks ago and it was at 0 0.12. So I think I'm finding a good balance here with my food, adding the food and my fish load. That's two weeks roughly at the same phosphate level. Nitrate is more connected to the biological than phosphate. For example, we know that the nitrogen cycle, you go from ammonia to nitrite to nitrate, so that's the biology part of it. Phosphate is a direct putting it into the water through your food, through the fish excrement. It has a lot to do with that. Uneaten food, but nitrate is more of a biological excess so therefore, if you have an intense biological load, maybe a lot of fish or not enough filtration, maybe not enough live rock, you advance guys. I know this is gonna be more of a beginner video. You've probably know this stuff, but leave some suggestions in the comments section to help some of the new uh, reef keepers on how they might do things if I miss some things, all right? All right, here's a little something that you might be interested in too. Uh, nitrate accumulation will deplete your alkalinity. So if you have a high nitrate level, it's very possible that you have a low alkalinity. So that's something to look at. If you think everything, your calcium is good and pH is good, if you have a high nitrate level, it could be affecting your alkalinity. And nitrate's a little bit different. You know, there is some element of nitrate in food, but very minimal compared to phosphorus or phosphate. So therefore, excess nitrate usually means that your biological filter is not handling the load of the cycle. Oh man, I am a... I am so rusty, guys. I am completely rusty. It's like I've started all over again with the equipment. I'm forgetting things, no sound, picture quality, everything is horrible. So that's why in this tank I can have zero nitrate and one part per million phosphate. Now I've had 0.6 parts per million phosphate. You know, we like to try to stay at 0 0.03, but I've rarely stayed at 0 0.03. And a matter of fact, a lot of commercial coral propagation, if you look at some videos, you'll see that they run very high levels of nitrate and phosphate. 
and they actually overfeed their tanks so they accumulate nitrate and phosphate because it grows better. So a lot of my phosphate and nitrate are being taken up by this refugium. Although it's a small one, five gallons, I still have to pick this clean, usually weekly. I just did this a few days ago. It was full and I picked about half out and it's already starting to grow back. I might want to add that phosphate is more of a contributor to excessive algae rather than nitrate. That's why you can have a high nitrate level and not have much algae in your tank. I will notice that when my phosphate is higher, my aquapora gets browner. And I can't really get a great picture of it here, but it's starting to get green in some locations here, which is nice because it came down since the move. But my softies grow great in a higher phosphate level, and obviously fish aren't affected by it at all. Mushrooms love a higher nitrate and phosphate level. I know this tank is well above 0.1, and they really do well. That's why they're called dirty water corals, because you can really be flexible with your water. You have to be careful of the algae again. If you notice in the back there, I have a refugium right inside the back compartment there. So that helps keep it uh, at least stable. I have to dip these again, guys. Remember from my last video, they're opening up, but not fully. And I still see a few more flatworms on there. So I'm dipping them this weekend and I'll update you. Look at the ones below here don't have the flatworms on them and they're opening up quite a bit. I thought it might've been the light, maybe too much light, but it's not that because the one back there is opening. It's the ones they probably have flatworms inside it. All right, I'm having an issue with level here, guys, on my tank. This side is low, so I'm going to try to use this thing to lift it up just enough to put this shim under it uh, you know you're talking about 200 pounds or more up above so i don't know if i can do it oh you sucker oh there it's going now i think i'm gonna hurt myself i don't know if that did it one got under Again, I should do this during water change day. I'll try one more time. 